Hello and welcome. Over the coming half hour, we'll be reflecting on a year in the history of KYTV and letting you, the viewer, have your say in Speak for Yourself. And we'll be taking a look behind the cameras. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Later, with our chairman, Sir Kenneth Yellowhammer, and our studio guests, we'll be discussing all aspects of KYTV. But first, in as unbiased and impartial a way as possible, we look back at the amazing success story of this last year and the brilliant way in which some of the wonderful programmes on our sensational channel are put together. <laughs> With the arrival of KYTV, people finally had a real choice. Viewers were bored of seeing the same old people on television. KYTV provided a different voice. Hello, and welcome to KYTV. <laughs> Early advertising was initially controversial. Lock up your grannies, here come the fannies! It resulted in the station being taken off the air before it had actually started broadcasting. The station was launched by the Sensational Six, as they were called, but they were soon to become the Sensational Five after the head of special features left because of other commitments. <laughs> and TV problems were to lead to other early cutbacks. Good evening. The 8 o'clock news on KYTV. I'm James Stubbs. The headlines tonight... I've just been made redundant. <laughs> Well, as you can see, there's a marvellous atmosphere here. And you know, in many ways, it's just like one big happy family. <laughs> no, you can't possibly have the afternoon off. Well, if you feel you must be there, I suggest you bury your mother outside company time. <laughs> what is a pond without a fish? What is a wishing well without a wish? What is a wall without a dish? Good morning, madam. I'm from KYTV, and I wondered if you'd be interested in installing a satellite dish. No, I'm sorry. I'm not really interested. Uh, well, I hope you get there, Frizzly. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yes, I'm phoning up about Jack Nicholson. Yes, it's Damien Dixon here, and I've got a part that I think is absolutely terrific for Jack. Yes, well, he's very laid back, uh, smiley, a hint of menace, uh, dark glasses, yes. Yeah, so it's, it's King Harold the First, and it's called One in the Eye. <laughs> no, no, it's telly. No, no, it's not the BBC. No, no, it's KYTV, and we're really very excited. <laughs> KYTV has quickly established a reputation for top quality dramas. Um, oh, Frederick, come in. Come in. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm late. Sit, sit, I'm, sit, sit down down sorry. Traffic. Um, um, <laughs> well, I'll no be needing any milk the day, Mrs. McNaughton. <laughs> Will you not, Alistair? Um, My good. This is a play set in Scotland. <laughs> and it's a star studded cast. Hold it. Uh, Jeremy. Um, is, is, is it anger, do you think? No, no, I don't think anger. Jealousy? Um, well, look. No. Jeremy is troubled by the fact that he only has one line and is having difficulty finding his motivation. <laughs> curiosity. A little bit of curiosity, maybe. A little bit of curiosity. Try it with that in mind. Right. Right. Um, can I take your bag, sir? Yes, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I think it's better with that little bit of curiosity. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, hello, I'm phoning up about Robert De Niro. <laughs> yes, I've got a part that I think is absolutely Robert to a T. Yes, body weight constantly going up and down. Uh, New York wise guy says things like, did you screw my wife? <laughs> yes, it is King Harold the First. How did you know? <laughs> you look after Jack Nicholson and I've just found you. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, thank you very much. Yes, I certainly will rotate on it. <laughs> of course, although the station occupies most of my efforts, I still have time for one or two outside interests, in particular raising money for good causes. Excuse me. Yes? Um, well, tell the parents if they don't pay up by six o'clock, we'll send him his ear in a box. 
And we're also particularly proud of our minorities programs, in particular the program for the deaf and blind. And what time do you broadcast that? Actually, we don't broadcast it at all, but they don't know the difference. <laughs> Well, I'm in charge of uh, colour quality control here at the station. I've never seen such a f***ing shambles in my life. Pull your bloody fingers out, all right? OK, let's go again. Get it f***ing right this time. Right, take <laughs> seven. Good evening. This is the right Reverend Reverend Wright with today's after worship. I think we need to move on. Uh, OK, uh, yesterday's programmes. Um, now, one or two complaints on the duty log. Uh, the Reverend Wright's dramatic attack of flatulence during his pause for thought. Uh, the five-minute speech by the leader of the opposition, which we broadcast backwards. And the incident with the sheep during the hobbies program. <laughs> Well, apart from that, I thought. Yes, uh, anybody got anything to say about the Birmingham Six Guildford Four piece? Well, it certainly looked like a sports story when it came up on the video printer. <laughs> but I know it's something to do with a criminal case of some sort. That's right. Mm. But I thought the sports department covered it pretty well. Paul Gascoigne certainly did us a bloody good piece to camera outside the old Bailey. <laughs> TV was soon to become noticed for the quality of its sports coverage. And Eric Bristow just requires double 20. <laughs> double 10. <laughs> double 5. Game on match to Eric Bristow. Nine, Roll credits. Eight, Stand by camera 2. One, Coming to you, studio. Three, Stand by to run five, VT. Coming in on 2. two Cut to three. Four. And Hugh David. Hello and uh, welcome to Good Day Sport. Love that uh, Chelsea three. one up. And I can straight away give you the news that Chelsea are beating Leeds. Leeds United by goal Dixon the scorer. That's Kerry Dixon who got the all important goal apparently. A Palace two up. And a Crystal Palace, I, uh, I understand, are now two up. Uh, do you want a sandwich, John? Uh, in their match against uh, Luton. Luton Town. Yeah. Uh, egg and lettuce. Were egg and lettuce <laughs> and the uh, two new signings. Uh, cricket, England on 96. And in Australia, England are currently playing... With cucumber. With a cucumber, apparently. <laughs> they could explain their poor form at the moment. Brown on 47. <laughs> Atherton. So far, uh, Derek Brown's on 47, I gather. That's not bad guy. Do you want it on white? And Atherton's... On brown. On brown. <laughs> US golf open. US golf open. Langer and Woosnam at the 17th. Uh, Bernard Langer and Ian Woosnam are on this 17th. Yeah, hole. anything else, love? And are currently have a picnic. Having a picnic. And a Mars bath. <laughs> and a Mars bath. We don't have any topics. <laughs> uh, across to Bill Saunders. <laughs> Go over to Bill Saunders in Atlanta, where Sandy Lyle's on the 14th. Tea uh, with milk and no sodding sugar this time. <laughs> hmm? What's the matter with that? <laughs> okay, well, well, let's uh, move on to today's show. Uh, right, the homeless story, Mike. Yeah, well, I thought I might do a piece where I go down and spend the night amongst them on the embankment. And you'll be sleeping in a cardboard box under Waterloo Bridge? No, in the Savoy Hotel. <laughs> I will be in a cardboard box. Great. Martin? Yes? Um, empty the waste paper baskets for us, will you? <laughs> right. Yes, that's great. Oh, that's lovely. Terrific. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, we've got Charles Brandreth. <laughs> he doesn't mind if we put his eye out. <laughs> KYTV. The best shows itself. <laughs> well, of course, there's an immense amount of paperwork to do with running a station like this. This, for instance, is where we keep all the documentation to do with the Australian shows that we buy in. Uh, this is where we keep all the documentation to do with the American shows. And this is where we keep all the documentation to do with the shows that we make ourselves. <laughs> no, 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 we're going again. Now, Sir John, you've seen it all, remember? You're a man of the world, so there's a touch of resignation. But on the other hand, you're ruthless and determined, so there's an, an underlying bitterness, OK? Reserve and resentment, indifference, but acerbic. Right. Off you go. In your own time, Sir John. New comfy press-on towels <laughs> for intimate needs. What? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it.
Is your pet too fat? And is all-out nuclear war and the destruction of all life on Earth a good thing or not? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Flex. Yes, gentleman over there with his hand up. Okay. I'd just like to ask why people like me, the silent majority, are never heard on programmes like this. Well, we've just heard from you, in fact. <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> You know, one of the great pleasures to me about doing my show, Flex, is the chance I get to meet so many wonderful people. Do you mind just shutting up for a minute? My television program, not a bloody zoo. Who's back on the seat? Yes, who would like to come in on this, then? Uh, yes, I'd like to put in a word on behalf of the silent majority. Yeah, not you, somebody else. Yeah, gentlemen at the back. Excuse me. The way people ignore other yes, people. Hold on a second. Yes, just... Hang on a second. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. And I'd yes. just like to know exactly what she thinks about that. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> yes. So you seem to be upset? Yes. Why is that? Because you've just hit me in the face with a microphone. <laughs> so, silent. Will you let me be silent? Certainly. Anybody <laughs> else? And wind my cup. Uh, Mike, Mike. Anybody want to... <laughs> um, should... I'll wind it up now, Kevin. Should fat people be allowed to marry? Wind him up. Shut him up. Stop him. Just tell him to shut the f*** up. Uh, <laughs> says, can you shut the f*** up, please, Mike? Jay TV. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I understand both your sons work here. Uh, yes, that's right, but I don't want to give you the impression that it's just jobs for the boys. No. No, I've got my wife and daughter jobs here as well. <laughs> Yes? No, keep the boy and send the ear. <laughs> They're not going to cough up much for his ear if they've already got the rest of him, are they? <laughs> Bye, Mother. <laughs> uh, are you surprised at not being given a post in the new cabinet? No. No, not really, no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a look at this. What is it? Well... Once you reach stage three, you have to dodge a group of ninja monkeys and then jump over a swamp for the turtles. <laughs> OK, Martin, now the key thing is to grab their attention as soon as they arrive, all right? All oh, right. Right, yeah. Oh. Uh, Mr. Lamont! Mr. Lamont! Mr. Lamont! Well, KYTV is, of course, subject to the strictest censorship. And the man responsible here for deciding what words can and cannot be said is, of course, Sir Kenneth Yellowhammer. Yes, well, there's a very definite hierarchy of words you can and cannot use. Um, one thinks of for example, which is completely unacceptable. Uh, and there are others, such as or which are, in many respects, just as bad. But uh, take a word like Yes, now that's unacceptable in the context, get that out of my face, but completely innocuous if you would say, my favourite film is Dick Tracy. So, on the whole, what are the words that cannot be used? Well, that would depend, I suppose. Shag? I won't, bless you. No, I have to be getting home. <laughs> Oh, I see. Uh, shag. No, well, shag is uh, acceptable in most contexts, uh, but the definite no-nos are f and tits. tits. Yes, you can't say tits. Oh, but you just said it. Yes, but your producer will bleep it out. Oh, yes. Yes, of course he will. <laughs> TV movies, the family favourite. <laughs> well, I'm currently standing here in the editing suite with KYTV's chief editor, Malcolm Kaczmierkiewski. Malcolm, perhaps I could ask you, how exactly does editing some of like, the news help? Uh, well, uh, by taking out the ums and the ahs and uh, the, uh, those sort of things and uh, generally rendering a, a piece of speech um, more concise, you know, it, it will eventually make it more... Um, Concise, really. <laughs> yes, well, perhaps you could show me an example. Uh, yes, well, if, if, we, uh, if I show you, for example, the piece I'm working on at the moment, uh, this is the unedited version coming up just now. Firstly, I am convinced that this government's immigration policy is crass and retarded, and anything they do, I say, should be treated with the utmost scepticism and hopefully ignored. For example... In reality, I am sure that the rights of a black man and woman with a large family are not properly guarded. I am driven 
mad by politicians and the like who suggest that such people should be deported at the earliest opportunity. Get rid of racism, believe me, and the world will be a better place. Yes, you see, and uh, this is the uh, edited version. Firstly, I am crass and retarded. <laughs> Anything that I say should be ignored. So, in reality, I am a black woman with a large family. I am mad and should be deported at the earliest opportunity. Get rid of me and the world will be a better place. You see? Makes a lot more sense. Let me just show you this. Here's what your house would look like with a satellite dish. Now, as you can see, it's tasteful, it's prestigious, very nice. And uh, here's what it would look like if you don't get one. As you can see, all well, your windows are gone. <laughs> the car's gone. So, Brian, uh, what's it to be? And in order to find out how much our audience are enjoying our programmes, we put a camera on top of some of their televisions to record their reactions. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to today's act of worship. This is very much a time when our thoughts turn to contemplation. And welcome to another edition of Mike's About, the show that's made by and for every member of the family out there in our wonderful family of KYT. <laughs> now, it's very simple, you can play at home, you know what to do. It's just... <laughs> So, a year of no little success, as you can see. And uh, with me now in the studio to discuss what we've seen and the rest of the year's output are John Tipley, a member of the RSC and currently appearing in Sooty's Magic Wonder Show and a couple of margarine ads. <laughs> Uh, Sally Mason, author of Goodbye Mum, the new Granada TV situation comedy with Molly Sugden, and last week's moving play about euthanasia, Goodbye Mum. Hello. <laughs> and finally, Malcolm Grace, art critic for Forum magazine and a devout homosexual. Hello. <laughs> right. What? Yes. Now, we've received a large number of letters concerning political bias in our current affairs output. And to show how seriously we take these allegations, here to answer them in our studio is our head of carpets. No. <laughs> Do you have any reason to think these allegations are true? No. No? Splendid. Thank you very much indeed, Sir Kenneth. <laughs> so, uh, let's turn now to the daily weather forecast. We get a lot of letters in each week about this. Uh, did you like the weather this week, John Tipley? Yes, yes, I thought it was marvellous. Yes, it was, wasn't it? Beautifully sunny. Yes, it's only a shame that KYTV spent the week forecasting rain. <laughs> did it? I think the problem was that the forecasts were repeats from last January. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Well, uh, let's now hear the views of our highly respected studio audience. Um, yes, ugly woman in the front row. <laughs> you don't seem to put on any schools programmes. Why is that? Uh, well, because I myself am not a great believer in them, per se. What, schools programmes? No, schools. <laughs> Dangerous thing, education. Turns people into communists, in my opinion. Uh, next, yes. What colour are your socks? I'm sorry, I can't see what that's got to do with anything. Uh, next question. <laughs> You yes, said last week at um, a CBI dinner that um, all KYTV's output was crap and that it was a sterilised service run by units for the benefit of morons. Do you stand by that? Uh, I don't think I actually answered your question fully, did I? Uh, they're sort of blue and white striped with a zigzag pattern down the outside. They're really rather lovely. Anyway, I think that's probably enough questions for the time being. Uh, Mike Flex. Well, there have been some controversial shows over the last year. A number of you have written in, for instance, about our Sunday morning programme, especially for Indians, entitled... Hello, Indians. <laughs> and several of you have accused our show God Alone Knows of trivialising religion and turning it into a branch of showbiz, a charge which is strongly denied by our advisor on rabbinical affairs, Rabbi Rabbit. Showbiz! Snobbies! Call Rabbi Rabbit for a song, a dance, and a theological annotation of the Dead Sea Scrolls! Yes, thank you for that. Have I got the Dead Sea Scrolls? No, I always walk like this. <laughs> Shalom, Mike. Yes, shalom, shalom, and uh, yes, thank you very much for dispelling those accusations so completely. And uh, a Mrs. Sheila Oakes writes to complain that your presenters are extremely abrupt. You never really listen to what people say and keep cutting them off in the middle of a. Okay, well that's uh, I'm afraid <laughs> all we've got time for right now. A quick reminder of the address to write to if you have any complaints, Sir Kenneth. Thank you. 
Uh, well, let's move on now to discuss some of the more experimental programming this year. Uh, John Tipley, what did you think of our international investigative news program being fronted by Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> yes, well, I felt he had a definite sensual appeal and uh, was quite effective in the bits in between speaking. <laughs> yes, Sally Mason, is that true, do you think? Well, personally, I'd like to shag the living daylights out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon? I'd like to Roger him rigid. <laughs> speaking personally. Yes, I'd agree with that. <laughs> TV as part of our going French season, Jean-Jacques Babézier's 1964 classic, Un homme et du ciel. Right, let's take some more questions from the lower classes. Um, yes, man in a cheap suit. What do you say to criticisms that your merger with BSE TV was in fact a takeover? Uh, well, it's absolute nonsense. It's a perfectly fair merger. Uh, from KYTV, we took the programmes, the staff and the buildings. And from BSE TV, we took the comfy chairs and the jiffy bags. <laughs> what, what about the name? Uh, well, from KYTV, we took the first two letters and we took the second two letters from BSE TV to form the completely new title, KYTV. <laughs> so, uh, let's have no more talk about a takeover. Uh, yes, uh, next person. Uh, no, not you. You're too fat. Person behind you. <laughs> I'd like to speak up for the side of the job. No, not you, thank you. Someone else. Uh, yes, a man with a bad skin complaint. Uh, would the panel tell us whether they think that the merger of KYTV and BSTV is a catacomb that's set bad at development of satellite television with regard to teleconferencing? <laughs> Malcolm Grace, would you like to answer that one? Uh, I'm afraid I didn't quite catch the question. Uh, well, I think what the uh, questioner was asking was, um, Read the panel tell us whether they think the merger between KYTV and BSUTV is a catalyst and a step back to develop the development of television with respect to regard to teleconferencing. <laughs> no. Right, this is a straight answer to a straight question then. Uh, good, yes, um, lady with the coat and blouse that clash. I've noticed during your news bulletins that there's very often a little logo in the corner saying CNN. Are you simply stealing other people's pictures? Uh, certainly not, no. Uh, it simply means that there's um, a continuity announcement coming up. What's it stand for, then? Continuity announcement next. <laughs> Obviously. Let's take a break. Good old yellow pages. <laughs> Not just for the nasty shits in life. <laughs> Spot this special offer on a KYTV satellite dish in today's Daily Star, and you could be entitled to a free KYTV satellite dish. And if you get a free KYTV satellite dish, then you could be entitled to a free copy of The Daily Star. So buy The Daily Star today and you could get a free copy of The Daily Star. Plus a chance to get a KYTV satellite dish. This offer is only available to owners of a KYTV satellite dish. <laughs> Malcolm Grace, the new play that was broadcast this week, which took a sensitive look at one man's psychiatric problems and how he came to terms with it. Hey, look at me, I'm bonkers. Yes. Uh, did you think it was a good drama? No, I didn't. And Sally Mason, what about you? Uh, no, I don't think Malcolm Grace thought it was a good drama either. No, but what did you think yourself? Oh, I liked it. 
Kate. No, I like to whoever played the sympathetic ward sister in particular. John Tipley? Uh, no, I think it was an actress of some sort. Uh, John Tipley, how would you sum up the stand of the programme so far? Uh, abysmal. Uh, abysmal, <laughs> Sally Mason. Yes, did you get fair? I think it's positively generous in the circumstances. Positively generous, Malcolm Grace. That wasn't a question. Wasn't it? No. Oh. Uh, well, John Tipley, then, uh, you've been taking a look at Sally Mason this evening. How did you find her? I beg your pardon, I have not. And you? Or maybe it was me, then. Uh, Malcolm Gray. <laughs> yes? Was that not a question again? No. Oh. It must be me. Mine's gone. Well, let, let's finally look at a major new drama series which starts tonight with a special feature-length bread bin. <laughs> Episode. Oh, that's a boiled egg. No, you said bread bin. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> shortly to KYTV. We're doctors, goddammit! I need help. <laughs> Quickly. A major new drama series set in the hitherto secret world of chiropody. <laughs> Is it... bunions? Yes! <laughs> These are my ingrowing toenails, John. I'll deal with them as I see fit. <laughs> your son will need a corn pad for the rest of his life. <laughs> Steve, starting soon on KYTV. Martin Gray, please, the music there. Do you think it was a good idea? Yes, I thought it definitely helped the mood. And the title, Sally Mason, was that a good title? Yes, I liked it. Very appropriate. And John Tipley, the programme so far. Have you enjoyed it? Yes, yeah, fine. And the meal in the canteen beforehand, Sally Mason, was that a good idea? Uh, yes, it was lovely. And my wife, Malcolm Grace, do you think she's a nice woman? Yes, charming. Uh, John Tipley, do you like my wife? I thought she was very nice, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she was once described by my mother as a venomous slut. Uh, <laughs> Sally Mason, do you think that's fair? I'm sorry, I thought we were supposed to be discussing television programmes. Discussing television programmes, yes. Is that a good idea, do you think? Yes, I think it's a very good idea. John Tipley, what do you think about discussing television programmes? Well, that's what we're doing, isn't it? Is it what we're doing, Malcolm Grace? Can we not just see another extract? Yes, can we see another extract? What do you think, producer? Yes, he says yes, apparently. <laughs> Sally Mason, do you think it's right? Can we just see the extract? Can we just see the extract, John Tipley? I'd very much like to. Right, well, it comes from a show that was broadcast last Monday night. John Tippett, do you think it was a good idea being last Monday night? <laughs> well, it was last Monday night, wasn't it? Was it last Monday night, Malcolm Grace? Well, you said it was. Did I say it was, Sally Mason? Of course you did, you stupid trout. I'm a stupid trout. Is that fair, do you think, Malcolm Grace? Oh, shut up and just watch the exact. Should I shut up, John Tippett? Look, you're an incompetent old borg, and no more beside a television programme than I can give birth. The only thing you can think of to say is, is that fair, and was that a good idea? And the only reason you're presenting this programme is because you own the bloody station. You're a self-obsessed, bigoted, neo-Nazi, power-crazed, pencil dick! Sally Mason, do you think that's fair? <laughs> Yes, it is. I wondered if you'd be interested in buying a satellite dish. 